dreams and in this video I'm gonna show you how I painted this cosmic fantasy mural. So first I started by making a sketch and for every inch on the paper I reserved one foot on the wall. So the proportions are accurate. Foot to wall. And then I started sketching out, well this is a primer to sort of because I already had the paint, the wall painted. If you're starting with a naked wall, also you have to prime it. But this is just the first layer to loosely translate my thoughts onto the wall to create the values and the shapes that I'm going to have later on. Then I started putting in the main colors of the sky. I started with a light turquoise, aqua green to the side and then coming to the left side I started adding some purples and blues and you can see the strokes that I'm using side to side strokes and dabbing motion to blend in the colors then I used a slightly damp brush with some diluted white paint and I started making circular motions and side to side motions and then I feathered in the edges to make the edges smooth and feathery and light and you can see this in fast motion because this does take a while to do a lot of patience but it's also a meditative thing to do I did that the rest of the wall made bigger clouds with a bigger paintbrush Enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. And then, starting to the left, I started adding in some red, some warmer colors, and then I made highlights to the clouds with orange and yellow, and these are kind of transparent. Then, I colored in my planet, it's a sort of warm, rusty colored planet, a little bit like Mars. Then, I used a sea sponge, a damp sea sponge and I dabbed some textures with that, some light highlights and some darks here and there to break up the monotony of the brush strokes. Then I made the stars under the sky with a flick of the wrist and some diluted white paint. I'm using just Sherwin-Williams white paint. You can use any kind of white paint. Then I started adding some more opaque clouds, more wispy. These have more white in them. They're not as transparent. And the more layers you put in, the more depth you can create with your paint. So yes, it does take a while to do all those details, but in the end it's really worth it. And the technique is fairly similar dabbing then wiping away then I made a secondary planet this one has some oxidation marks on it with some verdigris aqua green kind of colors and then I made some darker clouds that are not illuminated on the left side then I started going to the hills and coloring the hills in and I wanted to create the illusion of depth and distance so the hills in the background have more blue to them, more blue and purple because that's what's in the sky. So they kind of get lost a little bit in the atmosphere, they're still visible. Then coming forward I started adding more reds and yellows to my color mixture because you can see that is the color of the sand dunes. Then the highlights, the highlight from the left side has a a warm tone to it and the highlight from the right has a cooler bluish tone to it so I have two highlights in my painting and I refined my hill some of them were not to my pleasing so I decided to change them out a little bit I really like them much better the second time around then I added some highlights to my crystal light being I took a while to decide who she is. It took me a while, but finally I got it. Then I worked a little bit on the astronaut's helmet and I wanted it to make it look aged and a little old there. Then I started on something else. 
I started adding some glow in the dark clouds to my sky so the glow in the dark paint and pigments that I added are just an overlay over the acrylic paint and it doesn't change the look very much in the daytime but with a black light it does change it I did add some colorful pigments that are blue and orange and those show a little bit then I started to add my star glow on the wall then you kind of dab it out soften it then you make the rays from the center outwards you pull out with your fine liner brush and I did that for all of the stars this is an alternative to do when you don't have an airbrush or it's in the shop <laughs> I thought you guys might like to see how to do it with just a paintbrush and then I started working on my crystals and they have different facets and I kept in mind all the colors that might be reflected and refracted in there I used a ruler to help me make my line straight because I have straight line deficiency <laughs> facet has some lights and some darks in it so each facet is not one single color and that makes it look more realistic then I thought how can I add a little bit of sacred geometry in my painting so I thought to make it look organic and not too contrived so I added this pretty bridal veil mushroom that is so beautiful and all those hexagonal patterns are so satisfying to do and they're even more beautiful to gaze at so I thought that would be my sacred geometry fix in this painting with all those hexagons and it adds a feeling of mystery and magic and whimsy and who couldn't use more of that, right? And I worked a little bit on the astronaut helmet and I added some highlights in there and some reflections of the crystals because everything is interconnected and everything reflects everything else. And then details. And uh, of course I used a reference photo to make it look more realistic and whenever you have the capacity and the will to paint to create something, use some reference, it'll help you get the thing more accurately done. we go in the background everything starts looking smaller and smaller and having more and more dull color and the color of the background and then I realized that my little otherworldly alien creature should also have a crystalline look to her so I'm very pleased with how she came out and how things develop if you just give them time to. I didn't rush this project, I worked on it over the course of two weeks, that's why I didn't have a video out sooner. Then I painted a Mandelbrot set on her jacket to add a little bit more fractal magic to our world because why not fractals are beautiful and then some highlights and then i did her little creation glitter glow with some glow in the dark paint and if you're curious what paint i used and pigments check them out in the description below and then i had to put some glow in the dark on the metal broad set and onto the crystals the planets I 
used my glow-in-the-dark flashlight for this, my black light flashlight. But you can use a regular glow-in-the-dark fixture, neon fixture. And then I had to add, I just had to do it. She has her very own dragon because she's cool. So this is the last of the four part series how to paint a mural and if you want to see the other ones check them out at the end of this video. So with this my friends I leave you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did please like and subscribe and until next time my dear friend trust the flow. Oh, here we go. It's so